Hi, I'm Clay Lane, Caterpillar's Waste Application Specialist, and today we're going to give you a uh, walk around on the 730 articulated truck. So as we've talked before with our walk arounds, you can start wherever you want. The only thing that we ask is that you, you make it a point to start in the same spot every day. So I myself, I'm left-handed. I like to start at the left front. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this truck is I'm gonna come over, I wanna shut my disconnect switch off, make sure I pull that out so as I walk around, nobody else can come around and start that machine up, okay? Now, inside here, we got a couple things. We got our disconnect. We also have uh, a switch for our, our lights on the outside. I got my jump receptacle and also my emergency shutoff. Also right down below here is what we have our uh, weight to disconnect light. It's the orange amber light that whenever that light is illuminated, I can't shut that disconnect switch off because that's allowing my, my DEF fluid to purge out of the lines back into the tank. So I wanna check that out. Next thing is I come walking this way, I've got my hydraulic sight gauge. So I got lines in there that's gonna tell me what my sight, hydraulic uh, fluid is in the safe zone, okay? So we check that, we come over, we're gonna check tires. Now, a couple things with tires that we always wanna be aware of if I'm the operator and I'm just coming up to that machine is uh, tire explosions. I wanna make sure that I know for a fact that this tire isn't hot and I gotta worry about this thing exploding because if it were to happen to explode and I was standing in front, this lock ring would blow out and this lock ring can projectile out 1,500 feet in a tire explosion. So until I know for sure that this tire is safe, I always want to approach this tire at a 45 degree angle so I'm not in front of that lock ring, okay? That's tires. Now, talk about that lock ring in place. I always want to make sure the lock, the keeper is in there and that's what's going to hold it in. Also, I want to go around and look at all my bolts, okay? We don't got to reach in there and touch every one of them, but it just a good indication is make sure if I got dirt around them and I got one that doesn't have any dirt, good indication maybe it's loose. Or if I see some rust streaks or if I see anything shiny behind there, that's going to let me know that maybe I got a loose lug nut on there that I want to look at, okay? As I come back, I'm looking at my steps and my handhelds as that allows me my three points of contact when I climb up this machine so I can be safe and not fall as I climb up that machine. I'm also going to look inside, make sure I don't have any leaks or any broken lines. Um, we've talked about our steering cylinders before on any of our machines with the chrome. I always want to check out that chrome on my uh, hydraulic cylinders. Always a good idea to keep a rag with me so I can wipe off that dust around that, that uh, seal on the end of that hyd hydraulic cylinder because as that builds up with dust and every time that cylinder goes in and out, it takes a little bit of dust and debris with it. And before long, I'll end up with a leak around that seal. So I always want to keep that clean any chance I can get. I want to look inside my cab bounce. I want to make sure those are all in place. I've got a, a uh, bank of grease zerks right there. So we're making it easier for an operator to be able to do his uh, uh, daily lube and then inspections, but doing it from the ground, not have to climb up on anything and put all those together in one spot. I also want to get down and look at my uh, articulation hitch, okay? This is what, this area here is what allows this truck to flip over independently of the cab. But I want to make sure that all the bolts, everything's tight, and I don't have anything going on with that, with that hitch inside there, okay? I got the upper and lower. I want to look at it also inside. You can see I got my drive shaft. So I want to make sure I don't have any debris or anything built up around that drive shaft as well. Also, as I come around, I'm looking at my lines. I've got uh, hydraulic lines going through. I want to make sure that all my bolts are in place and in tight on my lift cylinders for my bed. And then right inside here, inside this A-frame, is my uh, parking brake. Okay, I want to look at that disc and make sure that disc isn't seized up, doesn't have any rust on it. Make sure the pads are making contact so I don't have a problem with my parking brake. And then I also want to look at the hitch back here and make sure we're taking uh, precautions and getting proper lubrication on the uh, connection point of our A-frame, okay? A lot of times as those, uh, if they don't get lubricated, they start to wear out, I'll start to feel the bed and the cab, some slamming back and forth, and that's always a good indication that that bearing and that bushing is, uh, is wore out. So we gotta keep an eye on that. Now, as I'm coming back, I'm gonna look top at my lift cylinder, make sure we're, we're greasing as well, but also make sure all my pins and my pin keepers and bolts are in place as I look at that coming around. Same thing on my tires coming back. 
I'm going to check out the tires, all six tires, the same way I, I did each of them. All right, looking at the lock rings. As we come to the back of the truck, a few things I want to look at back here. Number one, I can look inside of my axle and inside the inside part of the tires, okay? I want to look at those struts. I want to make sure I don't have any damage to those struts and that rubber coating on those struts, front and back. So I want to be looking for damage there. I'm also looking at my lights, my backup camera. And I also want to look at that dog bone going across there and make sure that I don't have anything going wrong with that dog bone for my suspension on my bed. Also, I want to make sure in place here is my, my uh, safety pin for if I got to raise the bed and lock it into place. This raises up, these holes come down, line up here. I can pull that safety pin out and lock that. So if I got to look at anything underneath on the rails of the bed and inspect anything, that's going to keep that bed from coming down, okay? I'm going to come across, look at my lights on this side. Now, another thing I want to look at as well is inside these, these baffles of this truck, okay? From an operator perspective, you really want to look at that because birds like to build nests inside there. And if the bird builds a nest inside there and I've got exhaust or something running through, it's going to cause that, that nest to catch on fire and then I could possibly have a fire on my, on my truck, okay? Now, coming to this side of the truck, we looked at everything on the back for anything. It also gave me the opportunity to look at my, my struts and my suspension on this side. Same thing with my tires, any damage to the tires, lug nuts, as well as making sure my lock ring is in place. Now I'm gonna do the same inspection over here as I did over there. Looking at that lift cylinder, <clears throat> looking underneath. Also, these right here are my steering, my steering locks, okay? They're bolted onto the, on the frame of the truck. There's one on the other side, as well as this side. And those things come off and they'll bolt right here on the steering cylinder and that's going to keep that truck from articulating whether it's during transport or whether the mechanics got to work in there so i always want to check make sure those are in place okay coming around looking inside looking to make sure i don't have any damage in my mud flaps i've got a little keeper right here to where i can pull the mud flaps up during the transport um, when that's on the low boy and the little clip right there that'll hold that mud flap up if i don't want that hanging down or i'm going to be in an environment to where it possibly could get damaged. Another thing we want to look at when we look at that our, our, that hitch is the uh, the, ru the rubber uh, seal coming across with the band. I always want to make sure that's in place. That's keeping that dust and debris from getting inside that hitch and uh, keeps it from uh, having any excessive damage to it by getting dirty. Also inside here, I'm looking at any, for any leaks on any of my hydraulic lines. Just anything out of the ordinary that uh, could be taking place in there. Steps, handheld, same thing that we did on the other side. Same thing with my tires as I did on the other side. Looking up top, we, you can see the uh, two wing nut screws up top. That's my cab filter. So we want to keep our cab filter clean. We got our uh, diesel fuel coming around, looking underneath. Also, as I get back up to the front, this is a good spot where I can get down underneath and look to see if I have any fluids that are leaking out through my belly pans. Also, it allows me uh, up close to see anything leaking out of the uh, axles as well. Now, after I've looked underneath, I'm gonna cut back over here real quick. This is gonna be my death fill, okay? And once again, keeping that rag with you, keeping this area clean when I fill up my death. The death is very easily contaminated. So if I've got any dust or, or debris around it, I run the risk of contaminating that fluid and then it's gonna give me problems with my my Caterpillar emissions module or my tier four setup. So always want to keep that clean as we uh, come around, okay? Now, as I come back around, back to the front, just looking at the grill for any damage, looking at the lights for any damage. And then that brings me back around to this front side where I started. Now, I'm gonna put my key back in. I'm gonna turn my disconnect back on. And now we're gonna go up top and open the hood and check uh, our engine oil. We're gonna come down here, check our engine oil. Here's my dipstick for my engine oil. It's got a little clip in place to turn. Air filter, we can pop these clips, pull that air filter out. Um, <clears throat> keep it clean and as you can see it's also got our ISO symbol on there 
And one quick thing to point out with this, this gives me a primary symbol which shows an engine block. It's also got a big arrow going in that's showing air intake. And then that dashed line underneath it always represents filter. So that little symbol right there is telling me this is the uh, engine air filter. Okay, and that's how I know there. And then also, good opportunity right here when I'm up top to be able to look around, make sure there's nothing going on with that engine, whether it's a broken line, whether it's leak, whether I've got any leaks coming out of my filters, or anything like that. Another thing that we always want to pay attention to as well is these IS, or, uh, SOS sample ports. I always want to make sure those rubber boots are on place in the environment that we're in. They could get loot, bounce off due to the uh, nature of the application that we're doing. So we always want to keep keep an eye on all those uh, SOS ports and make sure the rubber boots are on there, okay? Now, as I finish up, I'm gonna come back. Okay, at the top, we got our dipstick for our transmission. Number one, it's color-coded purple, just like all the cat fluids. We've got uh, color-coded for the type of fluid, and then I got my dipstick on there as well. And we'll put that back in. Maybe. Okay, there. And then right here is my transmission fill. Cap right there if I got to fill up with my transmission fluid. Engine fill is on top of the engine block. But once again, just checking everything out in, inside the engine compartment. Make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing going on with that engine before I back up and close the hood. And then as I come back to close the hood, one quick turnaround, my coolant check is the sight glass right inside here. And I got my coolant fill right on top. And there you have it. That is the walk around on an art a Caterpillar articulated truck coming to you live from a landfill. And I look forward to seeing you at the next landfill.